or something that would be extra biblical that a minister might might speak or say to us, it is never appropriate or acceptable to exercise rebellion. It is never appropriate to be rebellious. Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to another m and a ministerial moment. We're so delighted that you've chosen to be with us again on this beautiful Wednesday. Uh, and uh, we trust that you are enjoying the favor and the blessings of the Lord in your life. I spoke last Sunday on the theme of you don't have to eat the whole enchilada. And uh, as oftentimes is the case and has proven to be in this situation, after delivering the message, I felt that I had left some holes in my uh, delivery uh, that needed to be filled in and so that someone could not take my, my thought and use it uh, in, uh, a, uh, in a way that uh, was not intended. I, I do stand by my point that if somebody gets in the, pu in the pulpit and tells you that you need to drink the Kool-Aid, uh, and you know what I'm referencing, uh, that you don't have to drink the Kool-Aid. Uh, God has given us a sound mind, and God has given us the, the, the latitude to take control, even the responsibility, of our own walk with God. The Scripture tells us, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, however, in resisting someone that would suggest to you uh, some uh, outlandish or uh, extra biblical concept that you need to uh, comply with, uh, I, I do not believe that we are to be uh, accepting of everything that comes across a pulpit through a PA system. Uh, as being the Word of God, and that uh, we are not to be gullible to suppose that every word that comes out of a said minister's lips is divine in nature. However, with that being said, in opposition to uh, something that would be uh, out of uh, out of the realm of scriptural uh, premises or something that would be extra biblical that a minister might, might speak or say to us, it is never appropriate or acceptable to exercise rebellion. It is never appropriate to be rebellious. Rebellion, according to the dictionary, Oxford says it's an act of armed resistance to an established government or leader, the action or process of resisting authority, control, or convention. Cambridge goes on and says that rebellion is a violent action uh, and that uh, it is an effort to change the political system in a country. Action against those in authority, against the rules, and against the normal and acceptable way of behavior. Miriam Webster defines rebellion as the opposition to one in authority or uh, dominance, often with open, armed, and usually unsuccessful uh, defiance of a resistance. Two aspects of that uh, definition of rebellion I want to uh, uh, highlight. One is violence. It's never appropriate to resist the ministry with violence. There was one time in all my pastorate that uh, in the middle of my message, a woman jumped up from the pews, a uh, regular attendee of the church, and uh, challenged me and said, Preacher, I don't believe that to be true. Uh, she created uh, quite a scene. Uh, it was handled, I believe, graciously. Uh, but uh, that was, uh, that was uh, not the way to handle a opposition to a position that somebody may be preaching to you over the pulpit. Obviously, to walk out would be an option. Uh, obviously, to make a note and approach the minister at a later date and say, are you sure this is 
what I understood you to say. Is this what you're meaning? And is this what you believe? Uh, there are a lot of different ways to approach a scenario of this, but a, an act of rebellion, an act of violence, be it verbal uh, or, or whatnot, is never appropriate. Remember, violence is, uh, or excuse me, rebellion is in part a spiritual thing. Uh, and so we must be careful uh, to uh, be wise in what spirits we allow to operate in our bodies. The second issue here is that it is a rebellion, that rebellion uh, highlights the leader, highlights the leader. When a man gets up to preach and is endeavoring in his earnestness to preach the word of God, if you have uh, or take exception to what they are saying, understand that uh, it, by and large, it's, it's hard to make generalities. There are, there are shysters out there. I won't say that there's not. But by and large, the man in the pulpit is trying to deliver what the word of God says. So don't take your opinions out on him him if you have an opposition to what he has said the word of God is instructing us take an opposition to the word of God and study it and find out if his understanding is correct and your understanding is incorrect or uh, if he is uh, or is not in error by his uh, uh, exegetical study and delivery of the precious word of the Lord it is never appropriate. It is never acceptable to rebel. Remember what Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 12 and 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. You can't be in rebellion with all men or be in rebellion against an institution or someone and also uh, be, a com uh, be compliant to this verse of Scripture, living peaceably. And Hebrews goes on to say in the book, uh, chapter 12, verse number 14, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace. You can disagree peaceably. You can uh, be uh, in opposition to someone's position peaceably. You don't have to respond and to react out of uh, violence. Remember, remember that uh, John chapter 12 and verse 48 says, He that rejecteth me, this is Jesus speaking, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. My point here is, is that the Bible is what's going to judge us in the last day, not a pastor, evangelist, a teacher uh, of the Word of God. It is the Word. That's why I continue to harp on the fact, study, know the Word of God for yourself, know what the Scripture is telling you to do, and certainly, by all means, obey it with a faithful heart. Uh, someone might uh, bring up the statement that is made there in Hebrews chapter 13, and I read verse 17. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your soul as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves. I, I've got to be honest and, and uh, uh, in preparation for this thought, I, I, I gave it some thought. Uh, about this verse of scripture. And I, I, I cannot remember ever hearing anybody, minister uh, or, or person of authority, utilizing or quoting this verse of scripture uh, unless it was someone that had a personal vendetta or had a enlarged ego and they wanted to, uh, you know, uh, strut their stuff and, and have people to fall at their feet in obedience. You know who we are to obey? We are to obey God. We are to obey His Scripture. If, if a man gets up and says, bless God, the thing for us to do, as was done in 1980, uh, excuse me, 1978 by Jim Jones there in Guyana, uh, we need to drink the Kool-Aid. Uh, I, I, would, I would say that that Hebrews 13, 17 verse does not apply. 
If somebody comes and says, hey, let's get together and, and, and let's have a violent uprising against uh, uh, an institution, a business, whatnot, uh, I would say, uh, you know, even if they are in managerial or authoritative position over you, I would say that this Hebrews 13, 17 verse does not apply. If somebody says, you know, we need to have um, a, a mass uh, suicide like those in, I think it was California, the cult called Heaven's Gates in 1997 did, please understand that they are not the authoritative uh, individual in your life. The Word of God takes precedence. Let me just say this real quick. God is first in our lives. His Word, what His Word is delivered to us in His Scripture, it comes in uh, in authority above us. A pastor, evangelist, teacher, uh, whomever it may be that may be filling a pulpit, they are subject to the Word of God for, uh, before they can ever speak their own opinions. I know in Scripture, and you've read it yourself, that Paul said, this I say uh, as a command of the Lord, and this I say out of permission. And there are things that pastors will say out of permission. But the things that they say out of permission are not life and death. They are not salvation because they do not bear the authority of God his, and His Word. Now, I will close this thought, this rant, <laughs> uh, on this, uh, this final point. <clears throat> Some things just aren't worth fighting over. And let me, let me give you a story. <clears throat> I, I was a licensed minister with the United Pentecostal Church International uh, from 1983 to 2011-12, um, somewhere in there. I don't know the exact dates. <clears throat> and uh, in that organization, one of the bylaws, instructions, and stipulations that were placed upon the ministry was they were not allowed to have a television in their home. The UPCI took a hard uh, stance position against televisions in their home. Many ministers that I knew ignored that mandate because they uh, believed it to be uh, foolish and uh, outlandish and they went ahead and had a television in their home. That, to me, was an act of rebellion, an act of, uh, uh, of lying, because they had to sign on the dotted line saying that they complied with the rules and the uh, stipulations of the organization. Uh, I, for one, uh, never felt that the television was the devil's box, nor that it was uh, exceedingly wicked. I, I viewed it as any other modern technology, as a phone, a tape recorder, or any other modern technology, that it could be used for evil or could be used for good. However, in compliance with the organization that I was a part of, I never had a television in my home. So I'll make the statement again. Some things just aren't worth fighting over. Did it hurt me? No. Did my children, uh, uh, were they raised in a home that was awkward? No. We weren't allowed to have a television, but we rented a lot of videos and we watched videos and we enjoyed a lot of videos. Uh, it, and uh, it, that, that in itself was... Uh, not so uh, uh, stipulated, wasn't stipulated that we could not uh, rent videos. It was just that we were not allowed to have a television. So, uh, you know, some things just aren't worth fighting over. And, and in the mind to live in peace with all men as much as we can, as, as Paul said both in Romans and, and the writer of Hebrews stated, uh, you just, just don't have one. Or... If it's, you find it unacceptable, then bow out, be gracious, be respectful, be kind, don't be rebellious, don't be belligerent, don't, be, uh, don't let your mouth get you in trouble by saying some kind of slanderous thing against someone. Just say yes, follow your faith, know why you do what you do, the reason for your behavior, and go on, and just go on. 
Thank you for being with me. <clears throat> I apologize. My dog has been upset this afternoon. You can hear him barking in the background. Uh, she's keeping me safe and, and uh, that's what her job is. But nonetheless, uh, we're grateful that you've come to be with us. Until, until next time, don't forget to check out our website. We have also the uh, YouTube channel. We have a Facebook account. My wife has a podcast and we also are working on an Instagram. All of these to minister to you and hopefully encourage you and promote you and, and provoke you to good works as you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But again, until next time, God bless. You be well. Bye-bye.